or YouTube. I tried to make a video yesterday, but for some reason my phone was acting crazy. But I just want to show you guys a little progress got on the frame. As you can see, I notched this out and bent this piece of metal in. So when I weld my new piece in here, it sits flush with this. Uh, okay. I took the spring cup completely off, cut it along the factory welds, grinded it, cut it out. You can see. Uh, I ran me a new support going down to the ground with a little, just a little piece of flat stock metal. Welded this up because once I took the spring and the shock off, the frame would have sunk down. But this holds me in the same exact position. I, I welded this leg while the spring and the shock and the everything, the cup was still here. So I know that the frame is in the same exact spot as it was before. Then I cut the spring cup out, removed coil spring bolts for the shock uh, yesterday when I tried to make the video I also relocated my bracket here because it was sitting on top before on the spring cup but uh, yesterday when I tried to make a video I had started and went ahead and put a piece in here bent it and uh, welded it in now it's only welded on the top uh, I left the bottom unwelded because I still got to replace the whole bottom section of the frame as well as this part of the frame here. That's why you see the seam. I'm not worried about that yet. I'm going to replace this part of the frame at least back to this hole here, maybe even further once I grind it down if it's any more small pinholes or anything. Uh, so I came on the inside of the frame. Now, uh, like I said, you have to do this in sections. So. Let me sit down so you guys can see. Okay, cut this big section of the frame out here, as you guys can see. Before I cut this section out, you can see I got this section cut out. I got my ribs welded in there, but I hadn't cut this section out. This section was still there when I cut this section out. So like I said, this has to be a process. Small sections at a time, even though I have the frame braced, I still want to minimize the possibility of the frame tweaking or bending or you know moving any kind of way at all so like I said I cut small pieces out of time so I cut this section here out and I got a couple splines in here here and here right before this body mount so I can still get my body mount through the other side the only reason I didn't come all the way down with my splines is because this rear section of the frame really has no weight to it you know the rear end of the body the rear section of the body is sitting on it uh you know you have your body mount there your body mount there your gas tank will be in the middle in this section here but it's not really no flex back here so me adding all of the new metal on both sides and the bottom all of it welded tied in is going to be plenty enough strength for this section of the frame back here the reason why i welded my ribs going along my pumps in the frame it's because you got a lot of pressure in this area in your frame and where I took the metal out when I did the frame notch when I took that metal out of there I wanted to add metal in there to stiffen up the frame and give it more you know uh, strength and make up for all of the metal that I cut out even though it was rusty it was still formed you know it was in there so this is where we're at like I said I did this section first. I got it welded at the top, welded at the seam here. The bottom is not welded. Then once I got that all welded in, this was already cut. I cut this section here out all the way up to here. Remember, it was a rust spot in here. I got the good metal here. Then I put my ribs in all the way down like I told you I was going to do on the other side. So now the next step is I'm going to bend my piece of metal, clamp it down, torch, bend it all the way up. For this whole section now I got my ribs cut and all of my ribs are welded at the top and on the inside and the ones that are welded here are welded on the inside as well but not at the bottom the reason why I didn't weld at the bottom of course is because this metal is completely gone but it's getting all cut out now also the ribs also help me when I 
put my new piece of metal in here, all of this bottom section is gonna be replaced. So when I put my new piece of metal in here, I'll take me a piece of cardboard and I'll get my strip size, put it up there, mark it out, cut it with the scissors here. And then I'll lay that template on my, my piece of steel over there and I'll cut it out. And I usually like to leave a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch on each side because as you bend this metal, and it transitions up through there, it's gonna twist and, and turn a little bit on you. So you might end up coming short if you don't leave that excess gap. And it ain't no big deal. You know, you can always trim your excess down, grind it down, whatever. So it just gives you, you know, it's, it's never gonna be a perfect bend because I'm heating it with the torch and I'm bending it with C-clamps and all of that. It's not like a, a perfect bend in a machine. So I give myself that little extra leadway on each side of my template. That way, once I start bending it and I'm clamping it down and everything, that I know I have enough room. And if I need to trim some out, if it's a little too long in a section or I need to, you know, take a little metal away so if my gap isn't so big, then I'll do that. But at least I know that I'm not coming up short. And like I said, these ribs help me because now once I put my new piece of metal in here, these ribs aren't welded at the bottom, but they're welded on the sides and at the top. So now I can clamp from here to here with my C-clamp and I'm not going to smash this section of the frame together because I got these ribs in here. And the ribs is going to keep this, this section of the frame from collapsing as I'm clamping this metal all the way around and heating it with the torch and, and getting it into the shape that I want it before I start welding it. So that's another reason why I welded the ribs in there, you know, for the extra strength and for the purposes of clamping the two pieces together and, and bending it and making my transition piece. But I just want to give you guys a quick update. Uh, thank you. I think I already told you guys. Uh, that's not gold paint. That's this copper weld, uh, SEM copper weld, copper and zinc enriched weld through primer for superior corrosion protection between welded substrates. Uh, this is really good. It's kind of expensive, but it's really good. Uh, weld through primer one of the best ones i found and in, anytime i do something like this i like to use the weld through primer on the inside because i'm not going to be able to come back and, and uh coat this with anything once it's all sealed up so at least i know the weld through primer gives me a good uh layer of protection in there you know and, and just a little added added security from future problems with the frame i mean you know, you got all of these holes and you know from the factory, the frame gets dirt and dust and you know, I showed you guys all of the chunks and stuff that come out of this frame. That stuff will eventually happen again, just from driving on the road and rain and you know, any kind of weather conditions you drive your car in, but at least this will give it a layer of protection from, you know, rusting and rotting away real fast. So that's where we're at, you two. Like I said, I'm gonna bend this piece now, start, make my template get it together, get my piece cut, and start bending and clamping this piece here. Once I get this section here all uh, welded in and everything, then I'll start working on my bottom section there all the way down underneath there. And uh, I also, one more thing before I let you guys go. Uh, okay, if you see this here, this is my, uh, this is the spring cup here. So if you see these notches here, I took my grinding or my cutoff wheel and I just cut me some grooves across in a few spots on the shock cat or shock cup, whatever you want to call it. So you know, you see, you can see that I can line my marks up. Once I get everything back together, I can line my marks up. And I know that, you know, my shock cup is sitting in the same exact spot that it was before so you know i have to do a little trimming and a little manipulating because of this new metal i'm adding in here and the, the factory seam i cut out it kind of sunk in a little bit so i have to trim this up a little bit to get it to fit perfect but i cut them guide marks to make sure that you know once i get it in the position i want it i got all three of my marks lined up then I can go ahead and weld it out. And I know that it's in the same exact place it was before I cut it out. So I just wanted to give you guys an update, show you what I'm working on. Once again, thanks for watching the videos. Like, subscribe, comment. Have a good night.